I didn't want anybody to know something was wrong with me. <laughs> and I certainly did not want them to know that I was in a nut house. Because here's something you get absolutely free with this disease. This comes with the package. You get a real sense of shame. Because your friends go, come on, show me the lumps, show me the x-rays. Of course you can't. There's nothing to show. So you feel really disgusted, like, oh, come on, pull yourself out of it, because you're thinking, wait a minute, it's not like I'm living in the Sahara. It's not like I'm being carpet bombed or I live in a township. So you think, come on, you stupid. So you start to get these abusive voices, but you don't get one abusive voice. You get about 100,000 abusive voices, like if the devil had Tourette's, that's what it would sound like. <laughs> Actually, there is no devil, though. And there are no voices in your head. What you actually have in your head, and if you cracked your skull open, you would find about three pounds of the most complex piece of meat on the planet, and that piece of meat is you. That's it. That's you. That's why you laugh and cry and sing and dance and fall in love and want to go to the moon. That's it. And when you have a thought, something physical happens in your brain. There's nobody up there with a bullhorn. Something physical. So if you have a good thought, all these millions of nerve cells connect, and in the little gap, you get a feel-good chemical. And if you have a negative thought or a negative experience, all these millions of brain cells connect, and you get a real toxic, I want to kill myself kind of chemical. And if you have those negative thoughts over and over and over, I mean, some people, it doesn't matter if it's a beautiful day or you have lovely children over and over and over again, you might have yourself depression. And by the way, it doesn't care if you're well known or you live in a mud hut or what color you are. Depression just loves everybody. <laughs> and that's not even the tip of the iceberg. If you get a little baby and you abuse it verbally, its little brain sends out chemicals that are so destructive that the part of its brain that can tell good from bad just doesn't grow. So you might have yourself a homegrown psychotic. If, if a soldier sees his friend blown up, his brain goes into such high alarm that he actually, he actually can't put the experience into words, so he just feels the horror over and over and over again. So here's my point. How come when people have mental damage, it's always down to an act of imagination? How come every other organ in your body can get sick and you get sympathy, except the brain? <laughs>